This is the second installment of the Wall Street Image Podcast. Today, I don't know if I've ever been this excited to be sitting down <laughs> with somebody uh, so amazing. Uh, I grew up with this guy, uh, just seeing the progression of where he uh, has just gone in life. We played basketball together and AU ended up playing on the same high school team. None other than the marvelous, what they call him, King Chris Heisch. <laughs> Uh, he's a phenomenal athlete. Um, when I first got acquainted with Chris, um, I didn't really even know who he was. When he came in the gym, we were probably like 14, 15 years old. Everybody else was like, you know, we just kind of like 5, 8, 5, 9. This dude was probably already 6, 2. And, you know, we going through the drills and stuff. We doing the layups, slapping the backboard, think we doing stuff. This dude is hanging on the rim. <laughs> you know, so um, he's just always been a phenomenal athlete. I've always admired him. When, uh, you know, in my mind, if I could build a perfect high school athlete, I would give him handles. I would give him the jump shot. I would give him height, the length, and then I would also give him some hops. You know, you got to have some value. <laughs> And, 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 and if I combine that perfect analogy into one person, it would be Chris Heist. Mike, you was a high flyer to me. I was like, you know, I did, I did a little bit. I, I wouldn't put nobody on posters. I, you know, I do a little practice stuff. But, I, you know, in the game, I'm like, you know, I'm just going to lay it up. Hey, look. And, and, I, and I forgot to say this. This guy was a sneakerhead. When we, when we was in school, I was trying to figure out, like, the shoes released yesterday. <laughs> like, did he stay at the mall all night or something and then came to practice? But he, he was definitely a sneakerhead. Still wanted, is, man. Hey, if you wanted to see the coldest sneakers, Chris Heich always had the coldest sneakers. Now, not only was he a marvelous uh, high school athlete, also a prolific college athlete. Played with the Harlem Globetrotters that travel all around the world. So, guys... This is my friend Chris Heights. Thanks so much for joining, bro. I appreciate you having me. Man. Yeah, man. So let's talk about a little bit about your upbringing, man. So uh, tell us about you know just where you came from. How did your your upbringing kind of form who you are right now? Uh, man, I'm, I'm from the Queens, uh, right off Clinton Boulevard. Yeah. Um, upbringing, man, was was pretty. I mean, just like any other upbringing. I yeah. mean, a lot of sports. Yeah. Um, football, basketball. Uh, believe it or not, football was my first love. Wow. wow. <laughs> you hear a lot of basketball players say that. Yeah, football was my but you know, uh, over time I knew basketball was the right choice for me. But uh, the only thing probably been different, I grew up in a household where my parents were deaf. So I'm, I'm fluent in sign language. Wow. wow. Yeah, so, uh, man, but other than that, man, pretty normal uh, upbringing, man. Just a lot of sports. Uh a lot of hanging out with, with, with my friends, still friends with those guys to this day. Yeah. Um, and uh, to piggyback on what you said about how uh, my upbringing uh, affected how I am now. Um, just, you know, growing up in, in the inner city, man, not, I mean, I didn't have a terrible upbringing. Yeah. But, you know, my parents made sure I had what I needed. Right. But, you know, we also... You know, we, we, we struggled a little bit, um, and that kind of drove me to have that ambition where I wanted to have a better life for my kids. Yeah, you know what absolutely, I mean? absolutely. So uh, that right there, I think, is still the drive in me. Right, yeah, right, right. Yeah, so, sure. like, we talked about you being, like, a phenomenal basketball player. Like, you know, you even mentioned about loving football, but what kind of made you stick with basketball or what made you love it so much? You know when when you when you uh, when you young man you want to go play with the big big dog yeah you want to play with the grown guys exactly so, exactly uh, my cousin I used to be I used to follow him around a lot and uh, he would go play around the neighborhood you know it's different now yeah kids don't even play basketball outside exactly no exactly but uh, you know we have different places in the in the neighborhood where we go shoot ball so I think I was maybe like seventh grade sixth grade. So I'm out there playing with grown guys. Wow. And I'm uh I'm actually holding my own. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. you know, this might be it right Yeah, here. for real. <laughs> you know what yeah, I'm saying? Exactly. So that right there gave me the confidence, man. Right. And uh since then, bro, I was in love with it. Yeah, man, and, and then I think that one of the things that always has impressed me about you is like you were like naturally athletic, you know, and a, and that sometimes like can be a cr a crutch for a lot of athletes yeah, because yeah. They can only dunk or they yeah, can they only block on shots and stuff. Yeah. But you had like a complete package. Like you didn't allow 
having that like natural born talent to stop you and say, I'm not going to work on my jumper. I'm not going to work on my handles. Like, so what kind of motivated you to be like well versed in, in? Believe it or not, I was actually ninth grade, man. I was like 5'10. Wow. So I was always, I thought I was going to be a guard. Right. I, well, I, you know, I thought I was going to be short. Right. Or whatever. And, um, Man, just, I always had a ball in my hand yeah. around the neighborhood, dribbling, right. always just dribbling. You know, we, we, we see that that's when and one was big. Yeah, so you just still sitting there absolutely. working on your hand. Hot sauce. Yeah. 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 So, you know, I used to be just dribbling all the time, man. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, I used to love to shoot, you know, just shooting by myself. Yeah. Uh, I think my 10th grade year, I turned 15. I, and and I swear I did not know I had a growth spurt. I just started dunking. Right. Wow. Like, I, just, I almost got bounced. Like, <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And I was six three. Like yeah. I didn't even know. Like oh, that's something. Man, I had grew. Wow. And uh, the athleticism kicked in, and it was a wrap. That's crazy. <laughs> so like, was there anybody in your life, like whether it's a coach or a family member, that kind of noticed the potential in your life, that kind of kind of steered you in that direction to kind of keep you, you know, along? Because a lot of times when you're you know, you're a great basketball player yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. It attracts a lot of unnecessary stuff. Like, right, you know, right, right. the females, the, you yeah. know, just unnecessary but stuff. To, uh, honestly, man, it was my neighborhood, man. We, we was out there for a while, man. So mm-hmm. everybody knew me. Yeah. So I, I want to say, like, you know, they say it takes a village to raise a child. Absolutely. So everybody, you know, played a part, man. A lot of people, cousins. Yeah. Uh, friends growing up uh some of the older guys in the neighborhood you know what i mean so uh it was it was a team effort man a lot of people yeah 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 i appreciate you know the fact that there are people who really have your best interest right. like you know because there's a lot of people that when you're successful they don't want to see you succeed either exactly. but then like it's always good to like just take the time to go back and appreciate like i wouldn't have made it to where i am had this person told me Hey, don't do that. Mm-hmm. You know, you got you got something more important on your life. So like that's that's always super cool to me. So um transitioning from from high school, like you had so many accolades in high school. I was Dandy uh, Dandy does Dandy yep. uh, all metro. Yeah. Uh, all state um mentioned. Uh that was the year we lost. Yeah, to, yeah. Madison, Madison Central. Central. Still think forget. about that to this day, Bro, man. I have dreams about that. Do, man. You, do you dream about high yeah. school basketball? Yes. Like yes, it man. just, you know, sometimes I dream. And and what's crazy, man, people don't know. I only played one full year of high school basketball. Wow. You played one full year? One full Why year. Why was that? Because, you know, okay, ninth grade, I played on the ninth grade team. Yeah. So, they don't count. Yeah. So, that's, yeah, really, that yeah, that's, yeah. And I, uh, I, I was transferred to CMNI, mm-hmm. which is a private school. You familiar? They shut yeah. it down. Yeah. 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 Uh, transferred back to Provine, had to sit out. Yeah. Uh, and then had to play your senior year. I had to sit out my junior, junior year. year. Were you guys there then? Yeah, I think we played. No, I don't think I. No, no I came, I, my, I came my senior year. Yeah, yeah. Um, I set out half of that year, uh, played half a season, and then the next year was my full season. So I played right. one full season and a half. Wow, that's crazy. I, and I got Danny Dozen off playing half a season. That's crazy. That's I crazy. think the Jackson Tigers had a lot to play. Yeah, because you know I was scoring a lot for yeah. the Jackson Tigers. Yeah, so let's talk about AAU for a minute. So like, so how was like AAU? Like, do you remember? Like, it's crazy to me sometimes to see people in the in the NBA that we that you against. played against. Like, yeah. who, who are some of the people that you you've seen in the NBA that you actually like battled on the court with? Man, Brandon Jennings. Yeah. Ke- uh, Kevin Love. Yeah. Um, Blake Griffin. Yep. Yeah. I remember that. Who else? Who else did we play against? I remember Tyreek Evans tore y'all, us up. Y'all played them. He tore us up, bro. Coach, Coach was talking about that. Isaiah Thomas tore us up. Short Isaiah. Yeah, yeah. Tore us up uh, like forty-five. He was talking about because we lost to Nick Calathis, Chandler Parsons. Yeah, we played against them. Yeah. Uh, who else? Man, it's a lot it's, of guys. It's, it's so lot, many. To it's, name. So, it's so amazing to just see like. Like we played against those guys, and, and they're and going to camp with DeAndre Jordan and Isaiah Thomas. Yeah, camp with me. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's crazy, man. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, a lot of guys, man. It's, and, I mean, it's amazing, you know, just to see like where life kind of just brings yeah, you, like you just watching TV and seeing those guys. So, like transitioning from, uh, you talked about, you know, being a Dan does in high school and and all those great accolades. Like, so how was the transition going into college? Man, it's crazy to say, ask about that because me and 
Coach Kyle, you were talking about that yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a unique situation, man. Yeah. Uh, coming out my after my senior year, you know, I sat out. Right. Well, I didn't. I didn't graduate from Provine. I had graduated from uh, the next year, which was what oh seven oh eight. That was yeah. Ju- that was right. The, mm-hmm. Yeah, you got oh six oh seven. Right. That's when you were a junior. Yes. Yeah. 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 So that that year, man, I didn't. I wasn't in school. Yeah. I was I was just, you know, waiting on I was basically depending on coach, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Right, right. And uh it so happened I went to a game Jackson State at Jackson State it was Provine versus Lanier. Mhm. Uh I want to you were playing in that game. Was I? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was a uh, it was your junior year, I think. It was your brother's senior year. Okay. Okay. Uh and I seen the coaches at Jack State like, man, you in school? Yeah. I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm, and I was thinking about going JUCO. Okay. At the time, and uh, I was like, nah, man, uh, I'm actually thinking about going to JUCO. He was like, well, you can come here. Wow. Just <laughs> like that. Yeah. He was like, That's but crazy. we can you because you know they would recruit me. Right. While I was at Provan. Right. But, you know, I was I had Mississippi State, Southern Miss, yeah. Virginia Tech on the table. Right. Right. And uh, for some reason, man. Because Virginia Tech wanted to send me to North Carolina mm-hmm. to play in a prep school and uh-huh. called uh, Lawrenburg Prep. Right. For some reason, Coach Ryan, I don't know. It was a lapse in communication. Something happened mm-hmm. where – and, you know, I, did, I was the first person out of my immediate family to, to – Go to college. Go to college. So my mom didn't know anything about – Right. You know, so we depended on – anyway, uh, to make a long story short, man, I end up going to Jackson State. I had the big head. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, I knew I, cause you know, I knew I was good. Yeah. And, and, absolutely. And you know what I'm saying? Jackson State was a mid major, mm-hmm. smaller school. Right. Right. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to play right away. Right. 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 And uh, I think that wasn't the right fit for me. Yeah. At the time. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and then being this close to home, mm-hmm. when I wasn't, yeah. I don't think I was mature enough to balance the two being right you know right right so right. uh but i wouldn't trade that experience man because that really humbled me right right yeah. right right and uh you know i did i did three years at jack state um i didn't get a chance to play much i can say i can't blame the coaches too much because my attitude played a huge role in yeah that. And, and, and one of the things that i i always uh noted like when when i made the transition from high school to college it's like no matter how good you were in high school when you get to college, like everybody was the man. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Exactly. That's one of the things that I notice is like you you know, sometimes you think, Okay, I'm about to go there and start, I'm about to be killing like I was doing last year and then you get there and you, there's some guy from Iowa who scored fifty yeah, a game yeah, or something yeah, yeah. like that. So it's always amazing to me just to kind of see like you really have to have like a different mindset to actually be successful right. on the college level to make that that jump and that transition. And, and you gotta have to balance. Yeah. You know, cause you 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 got free. It's not like you're going back to your parents. Yeah, house. you have to you, have you discipline. Go, you have to, buy, yeah, yeah. You, you have like, to have discipline. You man. have to have dis- discipline, man. And, so and, that's and you know the talent. I, it was no question. Man. Yeah, even my teammates. Right. They, and when I came in as a freshman, they were like, "Bro, you." Yeah, absolutely. You know, but like I said, man, I, my head wasn't right. Yeah, uh, I think I should have maybe. I, I for a fact I should have went off somewhere. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I right. can just focus mainly on basketball. Right, 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 and not have like those those things that are close yeah. to you, kind of right you know, pulling you. Yeah, everywhere. like you were saying, yeah. everything pulling you. Yeah, way. absolutely. So like, let's go to like when you were growing up, basketball. You know, I'm sure you watched plenty of basketball. Like, who are your influences? Like, you know, today we got Kyrie and Durant and Steph Curry, but those dudes wasn't even relevant back. You know, when we grew right. up, we had like Darren Williams, uh, Tracy yeah. McGrady, Kobe, Kobe, Vince. You know, those are KG. Those were our guys. Like, who is like your main influence? Okay, of course. Uh, before Kobe came out, it was Mike. Mike, everybody's favorite. You know, everybody's I, I favorite. used to, I used to think Michael Jordan couldn't lose. Yeah, you know, exactly. that was not good. That yeah. was that's, that. That was our <laughs> like. So to me, if people say LeBron is better than Mike, I get that, offended. That's, that's blasphemy. I get, yeah. I get, I get offended by that. Yeah. You know what I'm but, saying? But, but, and, and I seen Kobe Bryant play. Uh, I think it was his first All Star game, and uh, I can remember like it was yesterday. My my uncle was in the hospital for something, and wow. it was on the TV, and I was like. That's the guy. That's the guy. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, I like him. Yeah, yeah, Kobe's, yeah. Kobe's like, like even to this day, like, yeah, man. You, you, he, it's just hard to compare anybody to him. Yeah. He just, he, and, and then I think one of the things that sets Kobe aside from everybody, 
not just the athleticism, the being able to like his mindset Work was good. so different. Like to score eighty one in the game though, that's 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 crazy. Like I think Kobe, um, you know, definitely a legend. So let's jump into the Harlem Globetrotters. Like, how did that come about? Crazy, crazy. I told the story a million times. Uh, okay, so I was playing in Mexico, mm-hmm. um, and the agent I was dealing with at the time. Uh, he flew me to Sacramento to work out with this guy. Uh, uh, he's a professional trainer out in Sacramento. Mm-hmm. And uh, some of the guys that were on his staff, uh, well, one of the guys, Don Sellers, he used to work for the Globe Trial. Mm-hmm. So he seen how athletic I was, and he was like, man, look, if you're not going back overseas, I can get you a gig wow. with the Globe Trials. I'm like, they still around, man. Yeah, you know, yeah, what I'm saying? thinking like, that it's like outdated. Yeah, because yeah. you know, we they we used never, to hear the Globe Charge when we was kids. Yeah, yeah. And, and they never came to Jackson. Well, I never knew of them coming to Jackson. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, "Yeah, man, you can make some, you know, pretty pretty good living, man, traveling inside the states." Yeah. So man, I'm like, "All right." So uh, he gave me the contact to the guy with player personnel. Um, I didn't call the guy right away. Mm-hmm. I waited to see if I was gonna get calls to go back overseas, right? Or, you know, go somewhere and play. So time was winding down, man. I said, yeah. nah, let me go and call this. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I called him. Uh, I was in St. Louis working out with one of my good friends at the time, and uh, I was like, you know, uh, just give me some details on everything. Mm-hmm. Flew me out the next two days, I think. He wow. said, "Where you flying out from?" I said, "Well, I'm in St. Louis." Said, okay, we're gonna fly you to Philly in two days. Wow. Flew out there, man. Worked out for him. Uh, they, we had a meeting after the workout. They, you know, because the Globe Trotters, uh, they have the Globe Trotters, and they have the op- opposition team. Right, absolutely. Right. So I started off with the opposition team. Right. I played for a year with the op- well for a tour, and uh, I did pretty good. I, yeah. They they didn't like how I was showing them out. <laughs> <laughs> you. So you <laughs> they hired this man for one job to make them look good, and he was making them look bad. <laughs> so, man, look, uh, we were doing an overseas tour, and I was still with the opposition team. Yeah. And one of the guys was like, hey, man, you're one of the best opposition players I've ever seen. Wow. He's, I'm going to write that to the office. like, And he was like, man, by training camp, you'll be a globe trotter. Wow. So, you know, I'm, I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah. dude, just talk. Yeah, exactly. So we get the training camp, man, I'm doing my thing. We had a game, a TV game in Venice Beach, California. Mm-hmm. So uh, we we uh, we played a game, man, did good. Yeah. That, we played that weekend, that Tuesday, I had uh, two missed calls from one of the coaches wow. and a, Text message, so I'm like, man, they are they about to fire me? What's going right. on? <laughs> you know? So uh, we call him Judge mm-hmm. uh, Lewis Dunbar, mm-hmm. or Lou Dunbar. Mm-hmm. I said, "What's up, Judge?" You know, I'm thinking like, man, he's gonna tell me. Yeah. Man. He said, "Hey, man, you a try to judge?" I said, "What?" You t-? I said, "Coach, I don't even know how to spin a ball." He said, "You know how to dunk the ball. That's all. <laughs> that's all that matters. We can teach you everything." Right, yeah. right, right. And uh, and yeah, after that, man, I had uh. Four good years with him. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. So where's, like, your favorite place that you've ever visited? Uh, I'm going to tell you one of the most interesting places. Mm-hmm. I visit. We visited uh, Israel, and we went wow. to Jerusalem. Wow. Yeah, I that, 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 was that, was cool. that was cool. And we visited the Dead Sea. Wow. That was pretty That was pretty cool, man, because, you know, it's, it's – uh, it's, very salty. Right, right. High, High salt concentration. Content, yeah. yeah. And there's no living organisms in that wow. sea. And you wow. can actually float. Right. Yeah. Without That's crazy. Yeah. That That's was crazy. cool. And the mud is supposed to be good for your skin. Right. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Uh that was a that was a good place. And uh Spain, we went to a beach with black sand. Yeah. Man, it's a lot of places, man. So isn't it amazing just like, you know, just grow, like as you grow up, like sometimes you never think about, you know, where a basketball can take right. you. 
But to be able to go to places like Jerusalem and Mexico and all these all different these, places, man. just from having like a skill. <laughs> and so I think that, you know, even to like the young kids that want to be professional basketball players, like even if, you know, everybody may not make it to the NBA, right. but don't allow that to stop you from, you know, pursuing your passion because it can take you literally, like you mentioned, all around the world. Right. So that's that's a phenomenal thing. So like now you're transitioning out of basketball. So you started your own business. You mm-hmm. got your own logistics company. Yeah. So so, so how important was it for you to like have a plan after basketball or to find something to do, you know, after that transition? Man, to be honest, man, I always had an entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah. I, I knew I wasn't fit to work a nine to five. Yeah. I knew. And if all of my adult life, I played basketball, you know what I'm saying? Right. For either, you know, from college, from right. playing for a scholarship to playing for money. Yeah. You know, just... It's always been a part of my life, and yeah. I knew after that, man, I didn't want to go work for anyone. Right, and right. Traveling the world, the globe tries to expose me to so much. Yeah, where I'm like, after seeing all this, man, I can't go work for nobody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't go. You work. can't go back. You <laughs> nah. sit in nobody's cubicle. <laughs> nah. Like you can't do that. No. Nah. So, uh, man, uh, when the COVID hit, and we, I, we, man, the globe tried, we were off for like a year. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it kind of uh, affected everybody. Yeah. So. Man, that whole year, I kid you not, I was on YouTube every day looking yeah. at stuff, you know, business, good yeah. business to get right, into. Right, 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 right. Shout out to YouTube University. Hey, you, hey, <laughs> hey, everything you need. Look, uh, and I came across, you know, a lot of stuff piqued my interest, man. Uh, like we were talking about before, uh, real estate mm-hmm. uh, and logistics, you know, it, it just came about uh, for me just checking out different podcasts. Right. And uh, the more research i did and i was like yeah that could be because you know i didn't have the capital for real estate right so it, it was low overhead man and and uh i was like yeah I, sh- I should do this so i got into i bought a van man and i got into the logistics thing and it's been working man and that's now, awesome yeah dude. now i'm scaling it into what we talked about yeah. uh doing freight agent stuff right so, so what's the name of your business uh, 1123 Logistics. It's right. 1123 is my dad's birthday. He passed awesome. away in 2018. Oh, man. Yeah, so. You that's know, a great he, way to honor him yeah, by yeah, continuing so he, his legacy with yeah, your oh, business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going to do big things. Hey, that's too. awesome, yeah. dude. That's awesome. Yeah, man. So, um, Chris, this has been great, bro. We're going to um, ask you some rapid fire questions, right, man. Get, so, these going to be off the top of the dome. Question number one, Chris. What's your favorite shoe brand? Jordan. Nike, Jordan. If you had to only pick one shoe out of the, out of the Jordan brand to live with for the rest of your life, which shoe would it be? The, ooh, man. The 11s. Yeah. Okay. Which, which colorway would, would you choose? Which colorway? Yeah, which colorway? Would you go with the red? Would you go with I'm going to go with the Concord. Okay, okay. The Concord. Would you rather... Cross somebody up, make them fall, and then hit the three, or put somebody on a poster. Come on, man. <laughs> you know who I'm going. He want to put them on the poster. Can I cross them up and put them on the poster? You can do that. Okay. Hey, look, I'm, I'm doing that. that. A times. Hey, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do that. that. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. All right, I'm cross them up, then put them. Oh on yeah, the gotta put them on the poster. If you had to lose one of these traits, which would you rather lose? Would you rather lose your jumper or your athleticism? <laughs> I'm gonna have to lose that jump, man. Yeah, 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 I'm gonna have to lose that jump because yeah. you, you, you can, you can't teach it, lessons, bro. You can't do it. Yeah, yeah, I can't. End this debate for me. Who's the goat, Jordan or LeBron? Jordan. Hands down. He didn't even blame. He didn't even blame. Let me ask you this then, since you went with Jordan on that. Kobe or LeBron? Kobe. So Kobe, Kobe, Kobe number my number two. Cover my number two, man. This is the last question. This is a, this is a tough one. You gotta build your super team with five players. Current players. They don't have to be current. They could be any. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go all time and then we'll go current. Okay, all time. All time. Top five. All time. All time. All time. At the point, I'm gonna go Penny Hardaway. Oh. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I ain't doing curve. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it, curve. At, at the two, at the, at the two, at the two, I'm gonna go Jordan. Three, I'm 
gonna put Kobe for KG. Okay. At the five, I'm going Shaq. Easy. Ooh, that's a big one. So look, give me your give me your current five. Current five. I'm gonna go Ja Morant. Ooh. I'm gonna go Ja Morant. Anthony Edwards. I like the young boy. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go with my three. I'm gonna go Demar Derozan. I like that. With my four, I'm gonna go Giannis. Okay. And my five. And B. Hey, but that's a nasty line. <laughs> All right, Chris, my last, my last one for you, man. If you could say anything to inspire the up and coming generation, there's so many kids uh, here locally across the country that want to make it. Uh, what would you say to inspire them, to encourage them? What piece of advice would you leave them with? Man, basically, man, I know, I know it's, it's cliche, but just believe in yourself, man. Believe in yourself, cause. Nothing is impossible, bro. Like, I would never think in a million years that I would be able to travel to 30 countries and throughout the United States, maybe 40 states in the United States. And, you know, growing up, I would never think I could do that. Like, it's, it's don't limit yourself, bro. Uh, you dr don't dream big, dream epic. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I love that. I love that. <laughs>